elicit some questions that you may want to ask me. Um, speaker's privilege, I'd like to thank Secretary O'Connell. Uh, we appreciate that $1.4 billion and uh, look forward to many more dollars as we, as we move forward um, in education. I also am uh, with you on the criticism or the constructive criticism by your brother. I'm thrilled that my two sisters are not in the audience. I don't know about your siblings, but mine would certainly um, be critical of, uh, they're my best supporters and my biggest critics, so I, I'm thrilled that they're not here. Um, but I would like to acknowledge that Kurt Kelly is in the audience. Kurt's a dear friend and almost, almost, like having a sibling in the audience, um, having been a principal of a high school, Kurt Kelly was the parent of one of my students. So it's close to the same thing, and I'm sure I'll hear from Kurt uh, when it's over, but appreciate your being here. Um, I really am so appreciative of the work that Tax Watch does. Every single meeting you focus on what's so very important, and that is education. I've spent 30 plus years in public education in the state of Florida. And I believe that it is, in fact, the great equalizer, our great hope. It's what we get the best return on our investment. But I would suggest to you that as Tax Watch does, it's so very important that all of you are vigilant to ensure that it is a good return on the investment. I take that very seriously. I, I believe that it is my responsibility, it is our responsibility in public education to do everything we can so to be the voice for those that cannot have a voice. And I think that it's so very important that we're held accountable for that each and every single day. So I appreciate, again, the work that you do. So, um, I've had some fun time over the last week. Um, would certainly love to talk about that a, a little bit more, but um, I talked about what our priority is. And it is, in fact, to ensure, to be the great equalizer, to ensure that all of our students are ready for college and career, both of those things, and more importantly, for life, whatever they choose in life. That's our responsibility. We have several ways to accomplish that. There has to be the right teacher in every single classroom, and I believe that. Um, it was said earlier that when I came to the department in 2004, I came as a deputy chancellor for educator quality. I did that very purposely because that was the area that focused on the teacher in the classroom. And that is the single most important factor in student success. So if we get that piece right, then we can make all the difference in the world. But we do have to have the right standards. And so it's important that our standards are of the highest rigor, can provide all students, not just some of our students, but all of our students with every single opportunity. So I, I probably don't need to explain to everybody in this room why that is so important. Um, you all see that every single day in the worlds in which you live. You know the importance of all of our students, no matter what they choose to do in life, have been taught the highest rigor possible. So I, I feel as though that's a basic step that we need to take. In 2010, State Board of Education adopted standards in English language arts and mathematics that were geared to better prepare our students for whatever it is that they choose to pursue. And this year, those standards are being taught in every single public school classroom and some private schools throughout the state of Florida. We began three years ago, and so students who are currently in second grade have never known any
anything other than these standards. My granddaughter is in first grade. She's never been taught anything but these higher, more rigorous standards. There's been some concern that maybe they are not developmentally appropriate. Now, I'll grant you, my granddaughter is gifted, right? Any, anybody, any grandparents in here, right? You know, she's gifted. But I can assure you that they are developmentally appropriate. There is the possibility that they have not been culturally appropriate because we maybe have not done what we can throughout our American culture to recognize that academics are so very important. But I would suggest to you that they are developmentally appropriate. And it is our responsibility to expect that of all of our students. They introduce critical thinking skills. I recognize the fact that as a parent, you don't want your teenager to be thinking critically. However, it is important that we do prepare our students so that they can problem solve. They can think critically. They can challenge us. We want that. We want that in our society. And to give the important literacy skills. How many of you have had employees come to your business that cannot write? Yeah. Pretty much all of us. We may, may not have hired them as a result, but we've, ha we've seen them. They've come to us. And it's important that they be able to write. We've done a lot in Florida in reading and writing and math. But what we've done is we've trained students to um, write a five-paragraph essay on what they think. And they're really not able to read information, synthesize the information, and from that information, draw conclusions. And we've got to have people, citizens in our world, who are able to do that. So, and, so that's in kindergarten, first and second grade right now. In third through 12th grade, they are teaching blended standards. So that they'll continue to take the FCAT 2.0 this year. They've got to be taught those standards. And they are also taught, being taught these English language arts and math standards that are common core state standards. They are being taught both. One of the things that I would point out is that um, when they began development of the common core state standards, they used Florida's next generation Sunshine State standards as the base. There is at least an 85% overlap in the next generation standards to the Common Core State Standards because they built them on our standards in Florida. So um, you, if you read the newspaper at all, know that recently Governor Scott issued an executive order and a letter to Gary Chartrand as well as a letter to Secretary Duncan outlining some things that he wants to see done. We've begun work in all of those areas, including last week, taking the show on the road, and having public meetings in Tampa, Davie, and Tallahassee. And we received, I believe, close to 200 speakers that came forward and spoke. Um, we have a website where individuals can go and open each standard and speak to each standard, and email, where individuals can send us an email. It's at flstandards.org in order to go make public comment, or it is flstandards at fldoe.org to just make a general email comment. I would suggest that all of you take the opportunity to do that because we really do need the public input. We really need to do everything that we can to ensure that the standards that are used in the classrooms are the right ones. Are they the best standards for Florida students? So that's what we're doing. Um, the, the website has received over 7,000, last count, there's probably more now, but over 7,000 comments and over 500 emails. So we, we anticipate that we will come close to 10,000 comments, public input on the standards. I, I think that at the end of the day, we'll have a strengthening of the standards. 
they will be even better than they were when the State Board adopted them in 2010. We've lived with them now for three years. Teachers have lived with them. They can provide comment. My daughter's a kindergarten teacher. She had a few things to say. Get to listen to that quite frequently. And um, so I would suggest that from a business aspect, you look and see, is this what we want our students to know and be able to do? And I would suggest that Florida students have already benefited by this series of public input because more people are aware through these public meetings, through this public input, that have ever been aware of our standards before. And although it's been a firestorm, I would suggest to you that it's pretty exciting for me because people are paying attention to education and standards and academics in a way they never have before. So I'm grateful for this opportunity, this pulpit, if you will, for us to talk about education in the state of Florida. And I know that testing and accountability is certainly an issue when we talk about education. Tax Watch last week put out um, a white paper on testing and accountability. I've said publicly many times that we have a moral, ethical, and legal obligation to ensure that our assessment aligns with what is being taught. So I've also said publicly we're, we are looking at three paths when it comes to assessment. One would be the park assessment, which was the um, consortium that Florida signed on to. We've been the fiscal agent for. Um, that's one avenue, and we will look at PARC and see if that is the appropriate assessment for Florida standards. We also are issuing an ITN. I'm hoping it will go out by the end of this week. If not, it'll go out early next week for test developers to respond to that so that we might be able to look at their product and see if their product aligns and is meeting the needs that we have in Florida. And then there are other states that have assessments. Kentucky's been, been delivering an assessment. New York has been delivering an assessment, which the diversity in New York and the size of New York makes it look very much like Florida. Um, and we will pursue all three of those options and make the very best decision for Florida. The applications for our intent to negotiate is due the middle of December and we will make that decision in March as to what assessment Florida will select. So I, I would suggest that you stay tuned for that. Everyone is going to be very interested in knowing what that will be. And the other thing is that we, we went for 11 years without revisiting our standards. That's probably too long. We probably need to do that. I mean, when you think about Pluto, um, you know that things change even though we may not think they are going to change, they change. And so we need to be revisiting to ensure that we are, have the best standards for our students regularly, not just when some concern is raised along the way, but all the time. And so I think that those are the avenues that we are most focused on in education in Florida right now, getting the standards right, having the right teacher in front of the classroom, and I would suggest to you, in addition to that, it is having the right leader at the helm in each school. Um, there are lots of research that shows who the principal is, makes all the difference in the success of the teacher. And so those are the things that we are focused on in Florida. I appreciate Tax Watch. Dominic Calabro was in Tallahassee and provided public input at that meeting. So he represented you all very well. And uh, we appreciate <laughs> I don't know if you heard Dominic, but he said for a change he represented well. Um, and we appreciate all the work that Tax Watch does.